Cool. Um, I'm Elliot, or Avios Adventures, as you know on Twitter, and I'm also responsible for the absolute balls up of tech right there. So that's me, um, and I'll, I'll hand over to everyone else to, to once again say hello and, um, yeah, kind of get the quiz going uh, 15 minutes late almost. So, uh, Paul, I think, I think you were next. Uh, yes, I'm Paul Lucas. I run a YouTube channel here on YouTube, uh, which most, if not all of you, will probably have watched at some point. Uh, I'll fix things on the grounds of quiz today, and my background, as you can see, is the Amtrak dining car on the Superliner trains. And I was supposed to go on Amtrak this week, which is why I've chosen this as the background. Uh, COVID had other plans for us this year. Uh, who's going next? delay but I'm, I'm going to crack on with round one because we're all here for some for some quizzing uh henry keeps dropping off noel i don't know what is happening on his side so um we'll get some questions in and, and we'll get going so pens at the ready um for round one um question one everyone what was JF Air, jfk airport called prior to being named after the former u.s president once again, what was JFK Airport called prior to being named after the former US president? Question two. What is the oldest airline still operating under the same name? So what is the oldest airport still operating under the same name? Question three, for all of you posh flyers out there might know this one. What airline is the largest purchaser of caviar buying over 10 tons per year? So which airline is the largest purchaser of caviar with over 10 tons of it purchased each year? Number four, what year did Concord enter commercial service? Was it 1976, 1980 or 1975? So what year did Concord enter commercial service? 1976, 19... 80 or 1975. Question number five. Which airline placed the first order for a 747? And it's not Ryanair or Wiz, as some people are probably going to type in the comments. Which airline placed the first order for a 747? Uh, da, 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 rattling on through question six which airline took de took the first delivery of an a380 and like a bonus point for the day and the year and the month and what time of day it was you can have an extra point for that okay number seven historically what is the most lucrative route in the world and which airline holds that record? So historically, what is the most lucrative route in the world and which airline holds that record? And question eight, it's been an emotional time for many of us this year with the 747s no longer gracing our skies as they used to, but which variant of the British Airways Retro 747 was was spared from being scrapped? Which which one are we still going to be able to, to see? So which BA Retro 747 has been saved from being scrapped? And question nine, can you tell me what is the longest domestic 
flight in the world and like what's the route where, where are we going to and from on there um, and give yourself an extra point if you can tell me roughly how long it takes uh, da, 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 da. question 10 and there's only a few more and then uh, I'll keep quiet for a bit um, by fleet size name the top five largest airlines in the world so that's a point each and uh, yeah top five by fleet size and Noel has returned this is excellent <laughs> hello <laughs> um, yes and, and the crowd is delighted by that Noel you'll be, you'll be pleased to know um, they, they missed you <laughs> <laughs> oh bless him the app crashed I've laid the developers on it <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the next sort of few points that are up for grabs are, are less aviation related and, and a bit more sort of travel related um, so for I guess question 11 it's in, it's in five parts you get a point for each I'm going to give you a country um, I want you to tell me what currency they use in that country so the first one, what is the currency in Albania? Number two, Algeria. Number three, Angola. This is getting niche. Um, but then a bit easier probably, Singapore. What is the currency in Singapore? And then Argentina. So to go over that, we've got Albania, Algeria, Angola, Singapore, and Argentina. And it looks like I kind of just used the first letter of the alphabet when trying to find the answers for this. But um, yeah, Singapore snuck in. And then the final question on my side of things is I'd like to know which countries celebrate or enter a new year first and which ones kind of enter it last uh, pretty much I guess 24 hours later um, so there's two points up for grabs there the first country to celebrate new year and then the last country to celebrate new year um, and I'll, I'll give it a moment in the comments if you do want a question repeated um, but yeah that's 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 the, the the nice easy intro. I I know what some of these other rounds are. So, um, yeah, good luck, everyone. Cool. Who's next? I I forgot. Paul. I will I will go next. Uh, I'll just do a quick sound check now before I start. Um, please type in the comments if you can hear me, and if you can all hear me, then we will begin. We'll just wait for that to come through. All good. Okay, we have lots of people in the chat saying they can hear me, which is good. So uh, um, the round that I'm doing now has 15 questions and it, the general theme is aviation and popular culture. So we're looking at the ways that aviation intersects with music, art, TV, film, etc, etc, etc. So um, pens at the ready. I'm going to start now with, with question number one. Question one, in this year's blockbuster film Tenet, T-E-N-E-T, -E -E the director Christopher Nolan crashed an actual aircraft into a building as part of the filming. What type of aircraft did he crash? Question number two. We heard of the Venger Boys' own fictional airline, Venga Airways, in their 1999 UK number one hit. But where was it flying to in the song? I think I know. 
Question three. Dustin Hoffman's character Raymond in the 1988 film Rain Man forces his brother to drive him across the country as he hates flying. What's the only airline Raymond says he'll ever fly with? Okay, question four. There is an epic flight chase scene in the James Bond film, Quantum of Solace. What type of aircraft is James Bond flying in that, that scene? Okay, question five. In 2004, the hit film The Aviator was released, covering the life of engineer and air racer Howard Hughes and his quest to build the enormous Spruce Goose aircraft. Who played Howard Hughes in the lead, in the lead role in the film? Who played Howard Hughes in the lead role? Question six uh, is probably for some of our older viewers. Um, Iron Maiden's 11th single, Aces High, features lyrics which talk about the protagonist flying which fighter aircraft? And question seven, going even further back in time, the Beatles song, Back in the USSR, opens by mentioning a flight from Miami Beach. But which airline is mentioned by name in those lyrics? Okay, question eight, bring it up to a lot more recent now. Uh, in season seven of The Simpsons, Sideshow Bob steals a museum exhibit, which is the first successful heavier-than-air aircraft, in order to crash into Krusty the Clown's makeshift TV studio. Which aircraft did Sideshow Bob steal? Clues in the question. Okay, question nine even more recently and this one is for two points so listen closely in the hit tv series breaking bad there is a mid-air crash between two aircraft over albuquerque new mexico you'll get a point each for telling me the type of aircraft involved in the collision two aircraft collided give me the aircraft type of each one Okay, question 10. In the, ridiculous hit, in the ridiculous hit film, Snakes on a Plane, a Boeing 747 is the setting for most of the film. But where is that plane with snakes actually flying to? Question 11. On August the 15th, 2001, a Cessna 402 crashed shortly after takeoff in the Bahamas while en route to Miami, killing all nine occupants. Which famous actress and singer was among the fatalities that day? Question number 12. Directed by Clint Eastwood, the 2016 film Miracle on the Hudson follows the forced landing of US Airways Flight 1549 on the River Hudson after a double bird strike. What was the name of the captain of that aircraft portrayed by Tom Hanks? A nickname for that captain is acceptable. What was the name of the captain of that aircraft? Question 13, unlucky for some. The 1996 blockbuster Independence Day features an epic fight by humanity to stave off an alien invasion. 
Which American military aircraft is shown dropping a nuclear bomb over Houston in that film? Question 14. The jazz trumpeter Louis Armstrong was one of the most recognizable faces and sounds of the 20th century. Hailing from the southern United States, which major international airport is now named after him? Which major international airport is now named after Louis Armstrong? And don't say Louis Armstrong Airport, I need the city. And the last question, question 15. Following the success of British documentaries, Airline and Airport, Two comedians, Matt Lucas and David Williams, launched a comedy series following the antics of three fictional airlines at Stansted Airport. What was that comedy series called? And that's it, that's all 15 questions done. If anyone wants anything repeated, uh, please say now in the comments. If not, we'll pass on to the next round. All the answers will be given at the end. I, th I think Noel, Noel's back and alive, um, and I think we're going to head, head over to, to Noel for his round, so uh, <laughs> over to you. What's the beginning? What's the beginning? It's not time to make jokes about. What? What? What I'll say, no, is what we can do is get get Henry to do his. I'm going to ping you on the background, and we're going to dial you into the into the call. So. I'll, I'll message you, um, Henry. Um, we'll 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 get uh, get you up and, and running with your round if if you're ready. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, let's do it. Let's Would, do it. All you, right, cool. you, you want me to get sharing? Do you? Yes, please. Excellent. I... I'm doing it for you. Don't you worry. Oh, okay. What do I do? Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, are we showing everyone? Can people hear me? Tell me, it's only, tell, say in the comments if you can hear me. It doesn't, oh god, the notes, show, the, the notes might show the airport though. Sorry? The, no, the notes might show the airport. Oh. Just... <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's no Sorry, notes. Sorry guys, thank you for your... There's no notes. Excellent, excellent. Cool, 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 cool. Thank you. Hi guys, uh, FO Herming here. So good to see you. Hope you're all doing well. Um, this is this is my um, one where you've got to guess the airport from above, pretty much. I am going to become Chris Whitty, uh, Chris Whitty and pretty much ask Elliot to say next slide, please. The slides aren't showing, are they? Are they not showing? I'll just click the arrow. I'll just click the arrow. Hold on. Are they not showing? No, it's not showing. That makes your round Are really difficult. Showing? Hold on. <laughs> uh, oh. It's, it's saying that we've all frozen. It's saying that everyone's frozen. Yeah, it has. And now, oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. We've just unfrozen. Try try showing the slides again. Let's have a go. Try showing the slides again. Right, let's see with the delay how this is doing. We're moving now apparently. 
now it's, it's frozen again. It looks like whenever you put the slides up, it doesn't show the slides, but instead freezes us. Yeah, that's a bugger. Like Hold on, I might have another trick up my sleeve for this. Um, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. We're going to work on it, guys. Don't worry. I'm quite confident. I'm quite confident. I'm glad you are. Here we are. This is going to work. Moving on the screen again, so I don't know if you can hear me now, but. Oh yes, we can. It's just hey. loading. Up. We can hear you perfectly, mate. Awesome. Our oh, oh, PowerPoint is now appeared with a loading screen. There we are. There we are. Well, hey, we've made How it. How's that look? We've, we've made, made it. it. Here we go. Okay, so they're saying it's looking promising. Okay. Okay. Good. Good, 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 yeah. good, 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 good. Go on, Chris Whitty. Uh, yeah, it's showing. It's showing. Well, hey, okay, it's showing. Okay, great, 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 great. Excellent. We, we're on the net. We're we're on the guidance um uh, uh uh page, which is great. So I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you guys some hints on the airports we're gonna see. Firstly, no airport features twice. So. If you see one air, if you put down one airport on your answer sheet, it's very unlikely to be there again. Secondly, these are all going to be commercial airports. None of them are military, and none of them are closed down. And thirdly, these are all airports in the world. They're not just based in one region. So please bear that in mind when you are picking each airport. Uh, next slide, please, and we will start this. <laughs> Which airport is this? Luton. <laughs> it, it, it looks like Luton. I can, I can see the rock at the end. I can see the cliff at the end. <laughs> I'll give it. I think I've given that enough time. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Which airport is this? Remember, guys, try and look at what you can see around the airport. Look at the runway orientation. Look at that. Those are the clues you're looking for. <laughs> I'm at the, I don't know which I'm looking at. I don't know what I'm looking at. Do I look at the YouTube or do I look at this? <laughs> at what point do I start plugging my online event service that I'm willing to, to sell off? Uh... Hey, listen. <laughs> it's going well so far. It's going well so far. <laughs> Next slide, please. <laughs> What airport is this? <laughs> no, no, he's no, he, no knows the one. I know this one. <laughs> yeah, no, no knows that one. He knows that one for sure. Link in the description, no. Do you want to just uh, send that one? Do you want to plug it? <laughs> mm. I think it. I think it starts to get a bit ropey here with some of the airports. Um. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you, Boris. Thank you. <laughs> what airport is that? Remember, look around. Look around what you're seeing. What are you trying to, what are you see? What am I, like catchphrase or something? What is this? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, man. <laughs> Crawley looks different, apparently. <laughs> yeah, Crawley looks different. It looks quite grey. <laughs> Quite, quite dusty. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't see any of the. Uh, I mean, this one's. Gonna, I think that one's going to throw people a bit. Throw people, but it's okay. It's a bit okay. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you, Boris. <laughs> Thank you. What airport is this? Now, before anyone says anything, it's not what you think, it's not where you think it is. That's your clue. 
It's not where you think it is. Look at the runway orientation. Next slide, please. Let's get a click on. What airport is this? Again. Look around. See, see what see the aircraft. See the runways. I, I sound like I'm I sound like I'm actually in the north. <laughs> see the runway. See. See see the um see the aircraft. See the terminals. What do you see at the on the actual apron itself? There's your clue. And the next slide for me, please. Oh, <laughs> what airport is this? You want a clue? I'll give you a clue because I'm a nice person. It's in the desert. <laughs> There's your clue. It's not much of a clue. Yeah, it's not much of a clue, <laughs> but it's in the desert. It's in the desert. And big plates go there. There's your clue, everyone. <laughs> There's your clue. <laughs> Next slide for me, please. Next slide, coming right up. What airport is this? Look at the airport. Look at the look at the infrastructure of that airport. What's so special about it? That will give you your clue. Henry, there's a job as an airport kind of estate agent in it for you after all of this. I think. I I, I think I should go for it. I really think I should go for it. I really think I could sell airport design. I could sell it. I could say, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. In, look at it in the face. Look at. Look at that runway. Look at look at that terminal. Look at that taxiway. You know you want to buy it. Um, <laughs> next slide for me, please. <laughs> what airport is this? If you guys want a clue, so. Oh, go on. I, I was going to say um, there's a there's a request from from Dan that to to go through to picture number five again. So we'll we'll run through all of these pictures once more um, to give everyone another look. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, the clue here is cowboys. Next slide, Next slide please. What airport is this? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the runway orientation. Look at where the planes are landing and taking off. You can't see the tower. It might have given you a clue. I'm sorry about that. I didn't take a picture. Next slide, Next. please. What airport is this? Is that a baby bus? <laughs> there is a baby bus there. There is a baby bus there. And it's spot the, a baby bus. Yeah, that's very, very well spotted. There is a baby bus. And, and you can see the airport doing their best to make maximum use of the runways that they have available. There is your clue. That is your clue for everyone. Look at the aircraft. Look at the airlines in that picture. What do you see? I see a gold fair as well, John. <laughs> I see a gold fair as well. I see quite a few. Actually. Next slide for me, please. There you go, Andrew. I don't know what I took. 
What airport is this? Hey Henry, is this one in the desert? Yes, it's yes. in the desert. It's in the desert, and it's literally and it's literally got a strip. They literally they literally have a long ass strip down <laughs> down close to this airport where what happens there stays there. Is your clue? Stunt <laughs> <laughs> it's Gandalf, yeah. Gandalf, yes. <laughs> uh, next slide for me, please. What airport is this? Look at the runway orientation. at the city around it. When you know, let me know. Well, don't let me know, just write it down and then we'll, we'll come back to it. Yeah. Don't let me know now, please don't. <laughs> don't worry, it's in the, in the chat. For everyone else who is having And the next slide for me, please. What airport is this? Now, it's a very famous airport. It's a very nice airport. In fact, it's won a lot of awards. That is your clue. The next slide, please. What airport is this? <coughs> Do I give a clue here? You're, you're too kind in your clues, I think. I'm, I'm very, I'm very kind. I'm very kind. I'm a kind person. <coughs> I'm going to leave you guys to guess this one, actually. I'm going to leave you guys to guess this one. I won't give you a clue on this one. But I think, I think quite a few of you will get it. If you, if you know what you're seeing, if you know what you're looking for in that picture, you'll be able to find it. I'm very kind with I'm very kind with clues. No more clues. No more clues. No more clues. <laughs> And the next slide for me, please. What airport is this? Apologies about the, the watermark. I couldn't find a better picture. So you're just gonna have to imagine that there's no watermark. What airport is that? <laughs> And the next slide for me. What airport is this? The next slide for me, please. What airport is this? I'll need its. I'll. I'll need its. I'll need its name. Not just the city for this one. I'll need its name. <laughs> I can't. I can't accept just the city because no. <laughs> no, I can't. On this one, I'm afraid I can't. I believe we've only got two left after this. Two and and the next slide for me, please. Thank you so much. Is this one what in the airport? desert, Henry? It is in the desert. 
It is in the desert. It's got a rock. It's got a rock by it as well. It's got a rock. But what rock is it? What airport is it? Don't tell me the rock. Tell me what airport. We're not, I'm not David. I just want to know the airport. What airport is that? And the final slide for me, please. Thank you so much. What airport is this? My question for Paul and Noel is how many of these airports have you guys actually been to? Yeah, I was, I was actually wondering that. And there's about three that we haven't been to. Yeah, same. Some I didn't recognise. I've obviously not been to those. But Well, that, that was my round. Um, I'm assuming people want us to go through it again. Um, I'm going to whiz through it, Henry. Just um, yes. I'll go. I'll yeah, go back to the beginning and just whiz through those pictures. Yeah, please. Yeah, um, just whiz through them. Just whiz through them. That'd be great. Yeah, you need. To, yeah. So, so, picture one. Picture one. Picture two. Picture two. Four. And that's that. That's that. Perfect. Thank you so much. Grand. And uh, last but not least, with their quite niche round, over over to you, Noel. Hello. I presume you can hear me now. Yes. Yes. That's all good. Yes. Awesome. Right. So my round then, Soviet aviation. We've we've got ten questions, all about Soviet aviation and Soviet airlines. Some of them are easy. Some of them not so. So let's see how we do. So question number one, known by its NATO code name Coke, this Soviet-built twin-engine airliner has a range of 1,500 miles, but what is it called? Question number two, often referred to by its nickname Concordski, the TU-144 was the world's first supersonic airliner beating the Anglo-French Concorde, but in what year did it first fly? Was it A, 1968? B, 1970, or C, 1972? Question number three. Originally founded as Aircraft Design Bureau, OKB 115, in 1934, this aircraft manufacturer produced loads of fighter aircraft in World War II before moving on to build a range of regional airliners in the 60s and 70s. But, but who are they? Question number four. Originally a division of Aeroflot called Siberia Airlines, this Novosibirsk-based airline was rebranded after their IATA code in 2005 and today is a member of World. But what is their name? Very 
very niche question. Let's see if you get this next one right, then you're very kind of good and better than me because I didn't know it. Um, used as power plants on aircraft as varied as the TU-154, the MiG-31 and the IL-76. This versatile jet engine has been called the single most important Soviet jet engine ever developed. But what is its name? Question number six. Founded in 1907, this Ukrainian company is one of the largest engine manufacturers in the world. Today, they also run an airline with the same name, a bank, and even a TV station. But what is the name? Ukrainian company. Who's there? Question number seven. Before the fall of the Soviet Union, Aeroflot were the largest airline in the world, flying over 146 million passengers a year to over three and a half thousand destinations just inside the Soviet Union. But how many aircraft is it estimated that they operated by the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991? Was it A, 2000, B, 6000, or C, 10,000 aircraft? Question number eight. Based in the Rostov Oblast of Southern Russia, this aircraft manufacturer specializes in building amphibious aircraft and seaplanes. But what is their name? Question number nine. Bearing an uncanny resemblance to the British VC-10 aircraft, the Aleutian IL-62 first flew in 1963. Today, just one airline still operates the IL-62 for passengers, but who are they? And finally, bringing you right up to date, question number 10. Built in the Irkutsk aviation plant, the brand new regional jet, the Irkutsk MC-21, will have its first delivery in 2021. But who will be the launch customer? And no, we've got a request just to do questions one, two, and three again, please. Um, yes. It was a bit jumpy, but yeah. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Question number one, known by its NATO codename Coke, the Soviet-built twin-engined airliner has a range of 1,500 miles, but what is it called? Question number two, often referred to by its nickname Konkordski, the TU-144 was the world's first supersonic airliner beating the Anglo-French Concorde, but in what year did it first fly? Was it 1968, 1970, or 1972? And question number three, originally founded as Aircraft Design Bureau OKB-115 in 1934, this aircraft manufacturer produced a range of fighter aircraft in World War II before moving on to build a range of regional airliners in the 60s and 70s. But who are they? Excellent. Grand. Well, that was the nichest round of pub quiz I've ever sat through um, in 2020. <laughs> so thank you, Noel, for, for, for that. Um, you want to mix it up a bit? <laughs> Yeah, it's um, <laughs> there's there's been a request for you to get on some of those planes if you can, um, and and film it. So um, I've been on some of them. Oh. I've been on some of them. I put the link in the description. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, grand. Um, well, everyone, that that's the four rounds. I guess it's time for for answers to see uh, how you all did. And Alice has just said she was doing fine until now. Um, so I, I, I'd imagine that's probably quite common um, for everyone. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll start going through through my questions and, and the answers and we'll, we'll go in the same order as, um, as we asked them. Uh, so I asked what was JFA, JFK Airport called prior to being named after the former US president? It was, I'm going to probably pronounce it wrong, Idlewild? Idlewild? Idlewild. Nice. There we are. Um, da, da, da. Number two, what is the oldest airline still operating under the same name? Um, I guess another way of interpreting that, how, what's the longest continuation of the same airline name? And it, it's KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, which was established in 1919. So uh, give yourselves a point if you, if you got that. Uh, da, da, posh people, what airline is the largest purchaser of caviar, buying over 10 tonnes of it per year? 
Um, I thought it was something else, but apparently it's Lufthansa. So well done if you if you got that right. Next one. What uh, what year did Concorde enter commercial service? 1976, 1980, or 1975? Give yourself a point if you got 1976. This is the point when you really hope that when you've Googled something, you get the right answer. Otherwise, you look like a right idiot giving the answer to people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, which airline placed the first order for a 747? It was Pan Am. Uh, and then which airline took delivery of an A380 first? Uh, it was Singapore Airlines. Uh, and it was on the 25th of October 2007 and probably won't see a huge amount of them anymore after this year when I was a school boy yeah when I was a school boy <laughs> question seven uh, historically what is the most lucrative route in the world and which airline kind of holds the, the title for that uh, it's the Heathrow to JFK route with British Airways and it's uh, over a billion dollars in a year that they, uh, I guess, used to get um, on, on, on that route. This is morbid, isn't it, um, going through some of these things? Um, question eight. Uh, which BA Retro 747 was saved from being scrapped? Uh, it was the, the Negus one. Is that the right pronunciation? I've never asked. Negus, I think. Yeah, I thought Negus. Yeah. Number nine. Uh, what is the longest domestic flight in the world? Um, and I was looking for just kind of city to city. Um, and it is a flight with Air Tahiti or French B from Paris to Tahiti. Um, and I know that this. Had used to, it used to stop in Los Angeles and kind of restock and, and head down. But I understand this year it did fly it non-stop, um, one of the ways, certainly. Um, and that, that was well over 17 hours. And um, I guess technically no passport needed uh, for, uh, for that. Oh, sorry, Elliot. Sorry. Sorry. Very quick question. Uh, question six and seven in your round. Was it worth two points or just, or just one point for each? Oh... <laughs> Oh, if you, if, yeah, give yourself an extra point if you got, I guess, the the day Singapore took their A three eighty, you deserve a point for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, to, 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 <laughs> there's your answer. <laughs> to, two points for question seven, so the route and then the airline. Um, on that, um, I then wanted to know for question ten. Uh, name the top five largest airlines by fleet size. Um, so in order, uh, we've got American Airlines, we've then got Delta, United Airlines, Southwest Airlines, and China Eastern Airlines. So the Americans going big there. Um, ba -ba -ba. Now, the, the next ones are more travel-ish related than, than aviation. Um, and the next five is the countries I wanted to know what the currencies were. Uh, so the first one, Albania, they use the LEK, L-E-K. Number two, Algeria is the Dinar, Dinar, some may say. Um, Angola is the Kwanzaa, K-W-A-N-Z-A. Singapore, they've got their own Singapore dollar. And Argentina is the peso. So a point each for, for all of those. And to finish it off, I wanted to know which countries celebrate New Year's Day, Eve, the start of it, well, each day basically. Who starts it first and who starts it last? Um, so the first people to, to do it are the people that get to live in Tonga. Uh, they enter a new year first, and then last, I guess very nearby to them, is American Samoa, but just across the international date line on that side. So give yourself however many points you feel you've got in that round.
And d -d 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 Paul. It's me up next. Is it okay? Aviation in popular culture. So let me get right back up to the top of my notes. Okay, the first question was, in this year's blockbuster film, Tenet, the director Christopher Nolan crashed an actual aircraft into a building as part of the filming. What type of aircraft did he crash? And the answer was a Boeing 747, which I assume he got the scrap from somewhere. Question number two. We heard of the Venger Boys' own fictional airline, Venger Airways, in their 1999 UK number one hit. It's, but where was it flying to in the song? And it was flying to Ibiza. The lyrics being, we're going to Ibiza, deliberately mispronounced. Okay, number three, uh, Dustin Hoffman's character Raymond in, in the 1988 film Rain Man forces his brother to, to drive him across country as he hates flying. What's the only airline Raymond says he'll ever fly with? And the answer is Qantas because uh, according to Raymond, Qantas never crashed, which is true. They've never lost an aircraft. Question number four. There's an epic flight chase scene in the James Bond film Quantum of Solace. What type of aircraft is James Bond flying in that scene? He's flying a Douglas DC-3. Question number five. In 2004, the hit film the Aviator was released covering the life of engineer and air racer Howard Hughes and his quest to build the enormous Spruce Goose aircraft. Who played Howard Hughes in the lead role in that film? And the answer is Leonardo DiCaprio. Question six is possibly the most niche one I had in this round. Uh, Iron Maiden's 11th single, Aces High, features lyrics which talk about the protagonist flying which fighter aircraft and it's a spitfire question seven the beatles song back in the ussr opens by mentioning a flight from miami beach but which airline is mentioned by name in those lyrics and for those of you that know the song it is of course boac question number eight in season seven of the the Simpsons sideshow Bob steals a museum exhibit, the first successful heavier than air aircraft, that's a clue, in order to crash into Krusty the Clown's makeshift TV studio, which aircraft did sideshow Bob steal? And it is the Wright Flyer. You can also have uh, the Wright Brothers plane or the 1903 Flyer or Flyer 1, whichever of those you want. As long as you got it right, that's the important thing. Question nine, in the hit TV show, Breaking Bad, there's a mid-air crash between two aircraft over Albuquerque, New Mexico. You get a point each for telling me the type of aircraft involved in the collision. And this is a trick question. It was actually two Boeing 737s that crashed into each other in that episode. They were both 737s. Question number 10, in the ridiculous hit film, Snakes on a Plane, a Boeing 747 is the setting for most of the film. But where is the plane with snakes actually flying to? Uh, the answer is Los Angeles, which is, you know, the destination is probably not very important to the plot of that film. But apparently it was flying to Los Angeles, so there you go. Uh, question 11. Now, I remember when this happened so i feel very old uh, on august the 15th 2001 a cessna 402 crashed shortly after takeoff in the bahamas while en route to miami killing all nine occupants which fa famous actress and singer was among the fatalities that day the answer is a liar question number 12 directed by clint eastwood the 2016 film Miracle on the Hudson follows the forced landing of US Airways Flight 1549 on the River Hudson after a double bird strike. What was the name of the captain of the aircraft portrayed by Tom Hanks? And the nickname would have been acceptable. Uh, his full name is Chesley Sullenberger, but he's more commonly known as Sully or Sully, S-U-L-L-Y, Captain Sully. Question number 13, and the answer is the B-2 Spirit, which is one of the nuclear-capable US Air Force aircraft. Question 14, jazz trumpeter Louis Armstrong was one of the most recognizable faces and sounds of the 20th century. 
hailing from the southern United States, which major international airport is now named after him? And the answer is New Orleans. He was born in New Orleans, and it's now New Orleans, Louis Armstrong Airport. And finally, uh, question number 15, following the success of British documentaries, Airline and Airport, comedians Matt Lucas and David Williams launched a comedy series following the antics of three fictional airlines at Stansted Airport. What was the series called? And it was called Come Fly With Me. So well done if you got more than 10 on that. It was uh, quite a difficult round, but I tried to cater for quite a few age groups. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that one. That's all 15 questions done. And let us know in the chat how you're getting on. Right, Henry, I'm going to bring up the pictures again uh, for your round so that we can uh, we can run through that. So if right, everyone cool. bears with me two seconds. Um, cool. Big bear with us, guys. <laughs> what, did you, what did you call your presentation? I got so much stuff on my computer. I called it. I called it airport quiz. Oh, there we so are. Very boring. <laughs> a lot of people are doing quite well in this quiz. A lot of people are doing very well. A lot of people are doing very well. Let's see about that. <laughs> um. Right. Well, that loads. Oh, yeah. thank you so. Oh, thank you so much, Grace. Thank you. That's, Grace, that's, that's uh, my, Grace that, has turned around and said. That, that's my sister, so I'm glad she thinks it's going well. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Grace. Uh, thank you, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Can you can you like and subscribe, Grace? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so my round was guess the airport. Uh, the first airport that is showing was, of course, Sydney. It's in, uh, Kingsford uh, Smith International, um, their main airport, with one of the stringent um, curfews going, quite literally. Um, I think it's I think it's still five a.m. there. You can't touch down, um, so I thought, why not? Let's put that in there for you guys. So yeah, a point for Sydney. I'll take Sydney as a as a uh, correct answer. Um, the second one was of course Zurich, Zurich Airport. Um, one of basically plain spotter paradise from what I've seen. Um, whenever I've gone there, they do they do excellent stuff for plain spotters. Um, third one, third one is of course Luca Lukla Airport in Nepal, which is the airport that you go to to go and uh, climb Mount Everest. Um, Obviously, Noel did a video of it, I, um, and that's he was very uh, excited <laughs> when he saw that airport um, <laughs> come up. So I thought, eh, why not put it in there? Because I think everyone, quite a few people, will get that. Um, next slide for me, please. Now, this one threw people. It threw people quite a bit, and the answer is Marrakesh. Marrakesh, Manara. <laughs> International Airport. Um, it's the only airport that back there trying to trying to go to the bathroom and they want local currency for you and there's not even an ATM yet and you yes. left in this dilemma of what to do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Um, I, I I I literally I, I couldn't find that. This one obviously threw people. Uh, this one definitely threw people because I, I I believe that people will put Innsbruck. But it's in fact Queenstown Airport mm. in New Zealand. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I, I literally thought I need to find an airport uh, in Oceania, and I did. And it was perfect. <laughs> so Queenstown. This one is, of course, Los Angeles International Airport with its four runways and its craziness. It's absolute amazing airport. Great airport, amazing airport, good airport. This one is Dubai International with its little 380s all over the place and its triple sevens and uh, it's and its seven three sevens and it, it, just Emirates, basically Emirates is basically there. That's, that's all I need to say. This one is Hong Kong Chep Lap Kok. 
if I said that correctly, <laughs> if I said it correctly, I will take Hong Kong. I, I will take Hong Kong. I, I'll be polite. I'll take Hong Kong. Um, this obviously was designed by Sir Norman Foster, uh, um, who was touted to take Boris Island. The next one is, of course, Dallas Fort Worth International Airport, the home of American Airlines, the hub of American Airlines with its countless runways going all over the place. Um, this one, I think, through people, it is Stockholm Arlanda International Airport with its free runways, um, with its home of SAS and SAS, really. Uh, <laughs> Norwegian. <laughs> yeah, and Norwegian. Yeah. <laughs> and Norwegian. Uh, uh, but well done to the people who got uh, Stockholm Arlanda. This one, obviously, is London Heathrow Airport, the home of British Airways, Virgin Atlantic, um, the hub of the uh the hub of the uk uh um I, I won't say more more on that but you can see the 747 the a380 um yeah. basically getting ready to go so yeah well done if you've got heathrow this one obviously with its strip to the side is of course las vegas mclaren international airport um with its three one ways and obviously the 737s, there's some 737s there that go off and um, do their stuff uh, at I, Area 51. I, I've also played golf on that golf course at, at, on the left hand side there, and um, oh, yeah. I, I always wondered if I, you know, how low that plane is when it's uh, coming in to land over you, and how bad my golf shots can be if it's actually a good place for a golf course to be, but um, yeah. It's it, definitely not. No. <laughs> it's definitely not. I can say that with, with certainty. Uh, what's the next one? Now, this one is Rio de Janeiro, Galileo Airport uh, in Brazil, uh, with its runways going, with one one way going to and the other one going diagonal, going somewhere else. But um, I needed one for Brazil, and I found one. Uh, well done. If you got it, I didn't expect many people to get it. Uh, this one is, of course, Vancouver. YVR. YVR. What an airport. What an airport. Um, won many awards for North America. Um, so many customer. Um, so many customer awards. I actually lost my passport <laughs> in, 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 uh, in, uh, on the shuttle bus, and they helped me get my passport back. Um, Stephen, who's in the chat, will know about that. Uh, let's just say it was an experience I'm never going to forget. I'm never going to forget. So big shout out to you, Vancouver. Big shout out. Uh, uh, next one. The next one is, of course, Everett Payne Field Airport. They are recently started in commercial flights um, with Alaskan. Before they used it, before all they had was uh, test flights for Boeing and general aviation. Um, but now they have started to do, um, they've now started to do commercial flights with uh, United and Alaskan um, flying into the airport. So that's how they got into this twist. The next one is Cape Town International Airport. Um, obviously, the big clue there was South with the South African, Avery 4600 lining up, up there on the runway. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a few some for a, a few Boeing uh, some for seven to be able to there in the distance. Um, so yeah, uh, that's done. This one, Ma Mali. I, I want to say Mali International in the Maldives. Um, it's an airport that you literally go down. You well, obviously you touch down, and then you have to backtrack on yourself and um, to come back and park up so that's how you mark marley thank you john Ma, thank you john marley um international airport um down in the maldives um, so you're basically thanks. saying that it's the london city airport of uh, the indian ocean <laughs> yes yes just a lot just a lot warmer yeah <laughs> and less buildings around the way this of course is new york 
JFK. I Idle Wild. Yes. yes. <laughs> Idle Wild. <laughs> two points to Paul. Not, <laughs> yeah, uh, two points to Paul. I will not take Newark. I most certainly will not take LaGuardia. I will only take New York JFK. Okay. I won't even take New York. I want New York JFK. I want you to be exact on that one, guys. Come on. Come on. This one. The big clue was what's in the background. It is, of course, I... I Ayers Rock. Ayers Rock. Ayers Rock. Rock. I'm close enough. Don't... don't, 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 don't I'm close enough. That, that rock. That airport. Well done, if you got that right. Well done. And this one... It's, of course, Atlanta Hartsfield International Airport with its five runways. The busiest airport in the world. And that was my round. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, let me know how you guys did. And I hand it over to you. Guys. To Comrade Noel. Comrade. <laughs> <laughs> Charles with tips. Charles with tips. Um, so, question number one then. Um, if you get like one of these questions right, by the way, then I think you've pulled the internet for tonight. So, um, question number one. Known by its NATO codename Coke, this Soviet-built twin-engine airliner has a range of 1,500 miles, but what is it called? It is, of course, the Antonov An-24. Question number two, often referred to by its nickname Concordsky, the TU-144 was the world's first supersonic airliner beating the Anglo-French Concorde. But in what year did it first fly? And it flew in 1968, one year before um, Concorde flew. So the Russians beat us to it on that one. And it also entered service before Concorde as well. Um, Question number three, originally founded as Aircraft Design Bureau, AKB 115, in 1934, this aircraft manufacturer produced a wide range of fighter aircraft in World War II before moving on to build a range of regional airliners in the 60s and 70s. Who are they? And the answer, of course, is Yakovlev, uh, who made the Yak-40 and the Yak-42, which actually were the world's first regional airliners, or the Yak-40 was the first regional airliner. Um, question, slightly easier question four. Originally a division of Aeroflot called Siberia Airlines, this airline based in Novosibirsk was rebranded after their IATA code in 2005 and today is a member of One World. But what is their name? It is S7 Airlines. See, Henry's like um, nodding away there, you got that one right there. <laughs> <laughs> Question number five, used as a power plant on aircraft as varied as the TU-154, the MiG-31 and the IL-76, this versatile engine has been called the single most important Soviet jet engine ever developed. What is its name? It is a Solovyev D-30. So you got that one very well done if you got that question right. That was... Question number six. Founded in 1907, this Ukrainian company is one of the largest engine manufacturers in the world. And today, they also run an airline, a bank, and even a TV station. But what is their name? And their answer, the answer to that is Motosich. Um, and they operate still. If you want to get a ride on an Antonov these days, you can fly on them still in Ukraine, in Kiev, and Zaporizhia, over in Ukraine. Question number seven. Before the fall of the Soviet Union, Aeroflot were the largest airline in the world, flying over 146 million passengers a year to over 3,500 destinations just inside the Soviet Union. But how many aircraft did they operate by the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991? And the answer to that, I mean, this blew my mind when I saw just how many aircraft they operated. In 1991, the Smithsonian Institute, because it's the only kind of reference we've got to it, but they estimate that Aeroflot operated over 10,000 aircraft in 1991. It was the world's biggest airline by far back then, so, which is pretty incredible, really. Um, question number eight, based in the Rostov Oblast of southern Russia, this aircraft manufacturer specializes in building amphibious planes and seaplanes, but what is their name? And it is Beriev, uh, and they operate the BE-200, which is like a jet-engined um, float plane that you've probably seen pictures of. Um, an uncanny resemblance to the British VC-10 aircraft, the Ilushin IL-62 first flew in 1963, but today there's just one airline operating them. Uh, but who are they? And the answer to that is Air Corio in North Korea. And finally, question number 10, bringing us up to date, built in the Irkutsk aviation plant. 
The brand new regional jet, the Airbus MC21, will have its first delivery in 2021. But who will be the launch customer? And the launch customer for that will be Aeroflot. So if you got one question right in that lot, then very well done. <laughs> Any more than that, then you are God level. So. <laughs> Oh, and we survived as well after our start. So thank you, uh, everyone, for being patient with that. But um, oh god, I've never panicked so much at the beginning of a quiz before. Since school, anyway. <laughs> that was that was something that start. But, uh, we 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 persevered and we got through it. it no, there's people with four or five points in that round. Um, oh, fantastic! Yeah, people got some. That, yeah, so, well, someone's like, claimed to have eight. Wow! Check the Check old uh, VAR for that one. <laughs> eight out of ten. <laughs> that is incredible for that. To be honest, I didn't know half of those questions myself. I had to Google the answers, but yeah, there's some tough ones in there. And, and remember, it's not about you know coming first that matters. It's the friends you make along the way um, that's important. So uh, yes, thank you everyone for for, for, for joining that. And um, God, they're, they're, I think Dan forty two leading the way um, so far. If he's being honest as well, which is which is I've got no idea what the quiz is out. So that that could be good. It, it, yeah, I don't know either. I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've given up. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it.